I was on the verge of sobbing in that train station. Finding the work experience was a journey in itself. Oh my gosh, it was so hard. Like one day I literally sat down and I called literally like almost every single dental practice in London. <laughs> How did I go from getting a grade nine to getting like a D or E? Just me, I was just praying. I was just praying and praying and praying. I was like, please God, please let me get to this interview. <laughs> So don't get me wrong, I haven't always wanted to do dentistry, but I feel like in sixth form, I really started to see it in a new light and I feel like it best suited my assets. So here's how I went from getting a D in chemistry to get an office in dental school. So let's start off with GCSEs. So the extra GCSEs that I did, aside from the normal compulsory ones, were history, computer science and triple science. I really recommend if you're in year nine or year eight or whenever you guys start to pick GCSEs, I really recommend you pick things that you enjoy. like. Don't pick things because your friends enjoy it or your friends want to do it because at the end of the day, it's your grades and you're going to be the one suffering if you pick something that you don't like. So that is my tip for GCSEs anyway. I really did enjoy computer science and triple science. I, like, I genuinely did enjoy most of the lessons and what we actually learned. History, on the other hand, was... Mm -mm, it was something. I'll give it that. It was something. It was... Let me not say anything but I did not enjoy it. The lessons for me were so boring because it wasn't, it wasn't really something I wanted to do, but I had the extra option, so I just chose to do it. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't really take studying seriously, seriously until year 10. I feel like the things I did before were like, I was revising, but it was like ineffective and it was like, I didn't really care as much until year 11. Honestly, if you don't wanna burn out, I do recommend doing the same thing. Like obviously do your lesson work, do your homework in year 10, year nine, all of the years but when it's year 11 you have to put that extra bit of work and you have to actually study outside the classroom and study effectively aim to do good in like your end of year exams especially in year 10 so you can get a nice set but obviously don't let that consume your life i honestly said this in many videos and if you want to check them out then i'll put a link here or maybe here i'm not too sure but be sure to click that and watch all the videos if you want some tips on how to make your studying more effective basically gcse's are important but i wouldn't risk my whole mental health over it i feel like i worked harder in gcse's than a levels i feel like i did overwork myself to get all of those grades work experience so finding work experience was a journey in itself oh my gosh it was so hard like one day i literally sat down and i called literally like almost every single dental practice in london and most of them said we can't do it because of insurance we can't do it blah blah i was like like I just want to shadow, I, I just needed to shadow someone. All I had to do was stand there and watch for they were saying, oh, I don't have the insurance, oh, we can't do that in our practice. I was like, okay, don't know what to do. And I was feeling so stressed. I was like, if I can't get this work experience, then I can't apply because I need the work experience in my interview and in my personal statement. If you're in the same boat, don't fret. You'll actually find something. You have to look constantly. And the way I find mine was actually kind of strange. Like I messaged, a lot a lot a lot of instagram dentists and majority all of them said no let's be honest all of them said no but then i messaged a dental student at the time her name is your one day so i messaged her and she was like here's a dental practice that i went to hopefully he'll let you as well so i messaged him as well and he let me and i was so happy like it's so convenient that she gave me that because without that i would have been still looking you might not find work experience in the most convenient way but you will definitely find something if you keep looking so i spent some days there i got to see how he interacted with patients the different treatments and i also had a course like a taste the day of dentistry and it was actually kind of pricey like it was actually unnecessarily pricey but it was 130 pounds which is now that i'm thinking it back it was helpful but not necessary at all but we had like hands-on suturing we got to learn about history taking we got to learn about x-rays we got to do some works carving on tooth models and i really enjoyed it but was it necessary no but did it help me i guess you do not need to go to any of these courses. I don't think I know anyone else who went to a course, but I just feel like it added something to my personal statement. I got to see whether I enjoyed the hands-on aspect and I actually did, so that was one of the benefits of it. So now onto UCAT. I booked my UCAT pretty, pretty late, like unnecessarily late. Like if I was to go back, I would not book it that late. I booked it in September, like I don't know why, like late September as well, like close to when applications were due, I think. If there's anything I regret about the application process is that I feel like the UCAT is important, but you only need like four to six weeks to prepare. I was like preparing for months and I got burnt out at the end. And I probably didn't get the best score. And maybe if I spent less time, I would have got a better score. I don't know. But honestly, 
I did rubbish when it came to UCAT as well. Over revising is really pointless, like it's not really something that you can cram, it's something that requires practice and just enough of it. You don't need to practice for months and months and months. I think I got like 679.5 on average, which is a really weird score, but it was enough for me to get all of my interviews. So aim for the highest you can get, but obviously you don't need to get the highest to get interviews everywhere. My score was in like the third decile or maybe the fourth, and I thought that I was gonna get like little interviews because it wasn't that high, but honestly it's fine. Let's move on to interviews, which were the most nerve-wracking part of the entire process. Honestly, they weren't that bad, like they actually weren't that bad. I went on many free interview courses that I saw on Instagram, for example, I think AC Medical Mentors, I'm not sure what it's called, but I'll put it here. And another one, Melanin Medics, I went to that one as well. And they were so helpful, like they brought dentists and doctors who already went through the whole process and they gave some really solid advice. When it comes to interviews, practice 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 with actual people and like you can do it on video call or whatever but just practice as much as you can i also spent some time writing answers to interview questions that i could possibly get so let's start off with my first interview which was plymouth and when i tell you this whole process was shocking i was so surprised with the outcome so basically we somehow missed the first train if you know Plymouth then you know it's very very far away from London so we wanted to be there 30 minutes before the interview which in itself was a mistake like if you want to go to an interview just come early there's no harm in coming early like there's no bad that comes from it so we missed that train the next train took almost one hour and when I tell you I was on the verge of sobbing in that train station my brain was going crazy I was like they're not even gonna accept me because I'm gonna come so late so when we actually did get on the train it was like 40 minutes, one hour later. I could not even enjoy that journey. I was just there so stressed out. Like when you think about it, there was nothing I could do. The train is gonna go, it's not gonna speed past because I have an interview. I was reading my interview notes, but I wasn't really reading them because I couldn't even concentrate because I was so stressed. I wouldn't even recommend looking at your interview notes like on the journey because at the end of the day, like what are you gonna get that you haven't already got from it? You're just stressing yourself out. It's like looking at your revision book right before your GCSE, it just stresses you out. So to make matters worse, to make matters even worse than they already were, I was already running like one hour late, there was a flood. Yeah, there was a flood and the train got delayed on many stations. Ultimately, I think it came up to two hours that I got delayed. So I ended up being three hours late. Yeah, even when I think about it now, three hours late, for an interview that is so unserious like that's the most like some people complain about being 20 minutes 10 minutes late i was three hours late for my interview i was like these people are actually not gonna accept me like it's actually finished like it's actually finished now but i kept calling them the service was so bad i had to keep walking around the train to get good service and they were like we're gonna make the group wait so that you can get into this group for the mmi and eventually they had to go because like they can't wait three hours i i ended up being the final mmi group and they're like if you can't come for this one then like that's it that's it isn't it like there's nothing else they can do so me i was just praying i was just praying and praying and praying i was like please god please let me get to this interview because it's actually like this is like my first interview like if i messed up this first interview i, I feel like i would be way more stressed with the other interviews because i feel like i have less chances of getting into dentistry so eventually god's willing eventually i got into the last in my group and surprisingly i was stressed but i was like masking it i was like trying to be confident you know like for these interviews i just like have a fake confidence like i wouldn't be that confident in real life but i have a fake confidence about me because at the end of the day you're not going to see these people again like just do what you can do i actually used the fact that i was a bit late as an icebreaker for some of the mmis because sometimes you know you finish early and if you just sit there like it's a bit rude so i was talking about how there was like a flood and how i was running late and it was like the weather was so terrible and it was something to talk about so i'll give it that and then my next interview was manchester which was probably my second favorite one of the questions that came up was something that i actually revised the day before because a dental student reminded me to study that and it was about amalgam and i mentioned the minamata convention and i felt so happy when i could say that because you know sometimes for interviews you're just waiting for something that they can ask you that you've known you've memorized the answer you know what you're gonna say and that came up and i was so happy it was also so much role play but luckily i've prepped i've already done like interview courses where they were role play so i was not as awkward as i would have been if i didn't so queen mary's was my next one and honestly the interview kind of scared me because it was panel like there's like 
three people and you're just there by yourself it felt like a conversation more than an interview make sure you do research on the societies because they will ask you about that I talked about the societies i wanted to join i talked about how i did digital art at the time and it was just very casual I was really upset afterwards, I don't know why. I think that's because I messed up on one question so I was like, these people are never gonna accept me. King's interview was something different. It was so competitive. I've never had an interview that was that competitive. Like normally before interviews, people talk to each other, people just like, they just have a little banter, just talk a little bit. No one talked to each other before my King's interview. It was just like silence. It was scary actually. And the interviewers were kind of brutal. Like one of them was just so, I didn't even know what to say. Like it was so brutal. That was definitely an experience. I was also extremely nervous. I don't know why, because it was my last interview, but I was just so nervous that it definitely affected my performance. So in terms of offers, I think I got the Plymouth one first, the Manchester one second, then the Queen Mary one after. Kings, I don't know why, maybe because of COVID, I think they thought that they were going to have too many people who passed. And honestly, a lot of people passed because of the teacher assessed grades. So, they waited until like the very last day and rejected me so yeah so now on to a levels i did biology chemistry and rigid studies it wasn't the typical choice of course i could have done maths i did maths for a levels and i hated it with passion with passion as in i wanted to drop it but i couldn't so yeah um don't be fooled you don't need to do maths you honestly don't if, unless you like maths don't do it don't go through the suffering if you don't have to a level maths and GCSE maths are not on the same plane for at all. Like I didn't really like GCSE maths, but it was doable. But A level maths just it, it just took it to another level. And then when we started doing year two content in year one, I was just like, it's too much. It's too much. I dropped. I, there was no option for me. Like from the start of the year, I knew I wanted to drop it. I think I really underestimated the amount of work that would go to maths. I thought just like with GCSE is just practice, practice, practice. But with maths was just too much like and the homework was too much as well i couldn't do it actually i couldn't i couldn't put myself through that point of a year so biology was kind of stressful because of the sheer amount of content that you had to memorize but honestly much easier than chemistry i did enjoy chemistry but it took me a long time to enjoy it because at the start of the year i was a bit a bit cocky i was like yeah i got a grade nine it's gonna be fine Organic chemistry was not fine, as in we had like a marked exam practice booklet for homework and I thought it was just homework, like just do what you can do, you know, do what you can do. I think I got like 13 out of 40 something. I was, I was just, I was flabbergasted actually. I was actually really shocked because how did I go from getting a grade 9 to getting like a D or E or whatever, I never know. And it really, really threw off my confidence because I was feeling too cocky after the GCSEs and that really humbled me and it told me to start revising properly because chemistry it's fun but you can't really mess around with it you have to revise like you have to properly revise and exam practice as well and honestly what really makes me laugh now is that in biology i was really stressed out about cell biology because i was so shocked my gcse brain was so shocked that we had to do a whole topic on the cell like a whole 30 pages 40 pages on the cell and i was thinking that's the hardest thing ever when it came to kidneys when it came to kidneys i I can only laugh because even till now I don't remember half of the things from the book let me be honest so in terms of exams I just like to thank god I would just like to thank god that exams are cancelled because if they weren't I probably I, not even probably I don't think I would have got the same grades that I got chemistry especially I was getting A's but B's also I was getting a lot of B's and I was thinking B B B I'm gonna get a B in my predicted I was so stressed over the whole quarantine over the whole holiday I was thinking I'm gonna get a B because the rest were fine I think the rest were definitely fine because we just did mocks before the whole lockdown school finish thing so I was thinking even if I get an A in biology it's fine I just need one A star I'm probably gonna get an A star in RS because I've always been getting that but I was thinking if I get a B just imagine just imagine how crushed I would have been if I got A star A star B like I would actually cry I would actually cry real tears on that day but luckily god was on my side as he always is and i got the grade i needed to get i was so stressed during that holidays couldn't even enjoy it i couldn't even enjoy it i was just scared every single day that i would just get a b in chemistry that means i would have been rejected by both my insurance and my firm which would have been so sad for me because i would have to do the whole process the whole interview process you care everything again especially because i had no control over my exams like if it was my fault that i didn't get my grade i'll be more accepting of that but if it was because i got predicted a different grade by that algorithm they tried to use i would have been so sad so when results day came around if you already watched my video you already know what happened but i woke up at like 6am that that 
UCAS website that always crashes every single year, decided to crash again. I was refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. Then I said I got into my first choice university and I was so happy. Like I was like moved to tears. I was just so happy. Like all of that stress, all of those months waiting and I finally got it. Can't actually imagine the relief. Like I don't even care whatever university it said on that website. I would go, I'd be packing myself, I'll go, I don't care because dentistry is dentistry at the end of the day. Like what matters is your score. It doesn't matter about your university. It just matters that you have a degree and you can work wherever you want to. So that was all I was aiming for. So that was my journey into dentistry. It was a bit unconventional. At times it was a bit unserious, but we got there finally. And it, I just finished my first year of dental school. So I'm really happy. But yeah, if you guys want any tips on any part of the process, like UCAT, interviews, whatever, or if you just want more dentistry related videos, be sure to comment down below and I will definitely get to that. I'll see you guys next time. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Bye.